What's up, YouTube? Uh, today I got the parts in. Um, it is Saturday. Uh, they actually came in three days earlier, so I'm really happy about that. Let's go ahead and slap them in, recheck our clearances, and then we're gonna move on to doing timing. And after that, we're officially done with uh, the engine rebuild. All right, guys, so I got ARP assembly lubrication on all the studs. Uh, I also had them on all the washers and nuts already. Um, what I also did was I poured um, assembly loop right here, where the, basically where the cams go. Not on this one yet, I need to put the bearing in. Uh, I put assembly loop all, on all over that. I'm also gonna put assembly loop on the top parts of the caps. And then I'm also, I also put uh, oil on the tap hits right there. And then I'm also gonna put oil on the camshafts as well. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, put in the main bearing real quick. Make sure this is clean, actually. And then we're gonna throw in the bearing. And then we're gonna put lube on the bearing and then we're gonna throw the cams in. All right, got nice. I got everything nice and lubed up. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and check the valve clearances, feel the gauge again, and uh, make sure everything's correct. And then we can go on to the final step, which is doing the timing chain. So the camshafts are installed. Uh, the gaps are, they all checked out perfect uh, within clearance. Now all we're gonna do is do the timing chain, uh, put the tensioner on, uh, make sure everything's uh, and timed and then that's that's it I, that's that's basically the engine build so uh let's go ahead and uh let's let me get you up to speed on how to do this all right guys so what we're gonna start off with is uh we're gonna install these two timing guides right here uh this one's gonna be a little loose don't worry about it because your tensioner is not installed once the tensioner is installed it's gonna put pressure on it and it's not gonna be loose anymore so anyways install these two uh uh, timing chain uh, guides and they're held on my 10 millimeters. So that's gonna be the first step, okay? The second step, you're gonna need to figure out top dead center for your pistons. And really the easy way to do it is, uh, you see this little notch right here? This notch has to line up where your main cap meets the block. So these are your main caps to hold in your, your crankshaft, okay? And uh, you see this little line where it meets the block and needs to line up perfectly with that pretty much. So you can't see it on camera, but it's lined up. After you have that done and uh, determine it's it's on TDC, uh, you can go up here and you know get a flathead to double check it if you're really curious about it. But uh, that's 100% how you how you get to TDC. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and double check with the flathead. The flathead's gonna be sticking up all the way. If not, it'll be coming down all the way. So that's how you double check if you want. And the second thing you're gonna need to do is line up these guys on your cams. I had to close the garage to show you guys cause that, that glare was really bad. So anyways, on your camshafts right here, you're gonna have these marks on it. That mark and this mark, lean and line up together. If they don't line up, you're, you're gonna be out of timing. So you need to line these two guys up and they kind of match up perfectly right here where, where, the, where the camshaft cap bolts down and you want them to point towards each other, okay? They're gonna be like perfect. Um, after that, you're gonna have these two dimples, right? These two dimples, they're gonna correspond to your timing chain. This guy. And you're gonna have, I'll flip it real quick. And you're gonna have uh, uh, black or orange marks on your timing chain, like right here. And then the other ones are right here and right there. If these marks are close to each other, which is one and two, they're right next to each other, this this part is gonna go on the top part, okay? Cause they, they have to match up with these, with those circles. And then this black, this black one down here has to line up with this dimple right there. And if all the dimples line up when you put the chain on, then you're within timing, okay? Uh, after you have everything lined up um you're gonna want to put the tensioner on and you're gonna want to pull the clip on the tensioner i'll show you guys how to do that in a second tensioner is over there so whenever you pull the, the clip on the tensioner it's gonna push the timing chain and lock it in place so that's how you do timing i want to pretty much show you guys how to set it up next after walking it through and then i'm gonna show you guys uh you know give you guys some tips on what to be careful with because it could be a little tricky Oh, and uh, to line these guys up, um, 
try not using these they're 14 millimeters try not using them but if you absolutely have to you can use them just don't over tighten or loosen them because if you loosen then you, you get to torque them back down that's the last thing you're gonna want to do what you could do is on the cams they have these marks on here to turn the, the the cams use a where's it at use a an adjustable wrench to turn the cams okay line them up so i'm gonna get everything set up i'm gonna show you guys how i did it and then i'm gonna uh, do some tips all right so uh again that's lined up with that and there's some uh you know i put a little tension on it and then that mark is lined up with that so now i'm gonna go ahead and run the timing chain down all the way down here to the the crank snout and i'm gonna line up this last dimple if everything lines up correctly i can leave it there and then i'm gonna go ahead and get the tensioner put pressure on it and then we're gonna lock it in place all right so that last black mark is lined up with that dot and everything is lined up correctly okay so the last thing we need to do oh and by the way i did take this off because for some reason it was easier to have it off so uh to line up down here so i just took it off so if you need to take it off uh, just take it off now when doing this part though you need to make sure you have uh, uh tension on it so you can put this dude back on okay and when you have that dude back on you're gonna need to put on your tensioner and then your timing will be done these two guys are lined up this is lined up to the main caps and then this right here is lined up uh all i need to do now is just tie in this bolt tie in this bolt release the tensioner and that's it you pull the tensioner it releases the spring and it puts pressure on it and it locks everything in place and after that that's it you're done one quick tip so uh after you finish everything it's always good it's always a good idea to get the 22 millimeter and rotate the engine at least two times and make sure the timing marks line up again so that one lines up that one lines up and this guy lines up so everything's perfect now we can go ahead and uh finish up the engine and that's it uh we'll be done we built the gen we built a, a 2.0 t engine all right all right guys so this is where your tiny uh cover bolts are going to be at you got a 12 mil another 12 mil uh another 12 mil 10 10 10 t 12 12 12 mil 12 mil 10 10 10 uh 12 mil 12 mil 12 mil two tens in the middle a 12 in the middle and another 10 right there and those are going to be your timing uh timing cover bolts for the front face and then for the oil pan you're going to have one two three four five ten mils okay one more quick thing um don't forget to put on your front main sail this is your front main sail right here uh all i did basically was get a big socket and then just uh, uh have it uh slightly hammered in place and it's snugged up perfectly fine you know it's snugged up good whenever it bottoms out on the lip right here if you still have uh uh, space right here where the lips at then you need to push it down a little bit more all right got so i got my bolts ready uh my sockets ready uh all i need to do now is put on some gasket maker all around here and on the bottom actually you know what i'll probably put gasket maker right here yeah i'll probably just put it right here and then uh we'll put on the timing cover all right guys so i have uh all sealant on here top and bottom and now I'm gonna throw it on, tying it down, and one more thing to go, and we'll be done. The front timing cover is officially on, and the crank pulley. And uh, uh, in case you guys were wondering what the crank pulley would look like, well, the fluid amper, this is exactly what the fluid amper would look like on the Genesis Coupe. Um, if you guys want a fluid amper, check out my other video. Uh, Genesis Coupe gets a fluid amper. Uh, there's a specific way to install this and you have to shave down the lip on the timing cover and i show you guys exactly how to do it but uh this right here 100 percent worth it um uh, i did get scared actually because i thought i stripped something uh but it it, it yeah, i actually didn't what was happening was um uh, when i was torquing this down or when i was torquing this down i uh this right here, of course, it's not made for this engine, okay? It's not made for this car. So when you put it on, it's going to have a very, very, very tight fit. So when you're tightening it, 
it makes a few popping noises because it's pushing itself back. So don't be alarmed when you're doing it because it's it's 100% normal. But uh, but wow, it looks it looks really good right now. I I can't wait to put everything else on honestly. All right, so real quick before I show you guys uh, the valve cover and how to put it on, uh, I'm gonna put on my water pump pulley. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys what I have going on real quick. Uh, because I'm using a precision turbo, I don't use the coolant jackets for it. Okay, it, it's uh, it's specifically oil cooled. So. A lot of you were like, okay, so what do you do with the the coolant lines? Well, on my coolant lines, it would be right here for the turbo and right here. What I just did is I just took off this piece right here. I cut it off and I just welded it shut, okay? This is for one part of the, of the OEM turbo for the coolant return line. And then this guy right here is the, the coolant feed line. And all I did was just put a, a cap on it and just tied it down really good. And this thing is not coming off. But I just wanted to show you guys what I did. Um, a lot of you guys also asked about uh, this guy. This guy is also capped off. I capped this off, which means um, which means this dude's capped off. And then these guys are useless. The, the top and bottom of the power steering pump bracket, they're 100% useless. So all you have to do is just cap this guy and cap this guy and you're good. All right guys, so for your water pump, the bolts are 12 millimeters and the short bolts are gonna go on this one and on this guy. Those are your short bolts, okay? And then your long bolts is gonna be the middle one, this guy and that dude right there. So uh, just gonna use the 12 mil real quick, tying it down and we'll be good to go. All right, up next, we're going to be putting on the power steering bracket. Uh, this bracket also holds on to your boost solenoid and your uh, wastegate solenoid. So uh, I'm going to put this on first right now. Uh, again, two 12 millimeter bolts, uh, short ones on top, long ones on the bottom. Oh, and a quick FYI, um, if you want to take out the turbo manifold, you always have to remove this piece because there's a bolt right there and this piece blocks it. So if you, always, if you want to take out the turbo manifold, make sure you take out this power steering pump bracket. All right, guys, um, I'm gonna do the valve cover now. Uh, the valve cover already comes with a gasket. This is a new gasket. So you don't need to put like a lubrication, or not lubrication, you don't have to put any uh, gasket maker on it. Uh, although I do, I have seen people put gasket maker on here before. So if you want to, you can, but I mean, to me, I, I just don't see it necessary. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this down. All right. And then it's held in by these 10 millimeters and they're gonna be long bolts, just like this. You're gonna have, let's see, say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You have a total of 18 bolts to tie it in to hold down the valve cover, okay? And uh, just like that, guys, our engine build is complete. Um, there's like a few things left to do, but uh, honestly, I'll probably do that in the next video. Uh, but for the most part, our engine build is complete. Um, when we come back, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to uh, how I mount the turbo, um, how I do the oil return line, oil feed line, um, put on this pulley, of course, and I might throw on the intake manifold. I'm not sure yet still, but. I'm thinking about it. And then I also have to put on the motor mounts. And after I have all that stuff on, I'm gonna go ahead and go over um, some of the sensors that we have uh, that a lot of you guys keep asking to uh, for help on. So like for example, those back sensors, um, uh, this sensor, these sensors right here. All these sensors I'll cover in the next video as well. So that's a wrap for this video. Uh, we'll come back and we'll do another, uh, um, we'll do our last video next next time. And hopefully the video after that, we'll have the engine in the car and we'll go move forward from there. So until next time guys, laters.